Welcome to this week's program of Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And today our program is Autism, uh, the Greenland Expedition. We're going to be going into detail about that. Uh, but first, I want to ask, Will, what's with your shirt this time? I'm glad you asked. This week's shirt is my Jog in, in the Fog. It represents a race I got sponsored by the Bay, by the, by, by the Bay Area. It represents running, and it, it was it was the race I that that they had sponsored. Very good, very good. So today our guests are Paul Nussbaum, who some of our viewers may remember from our season one a program, Conquering the Heights, um, and Christian Damien Especha. And today they are going to be talking about their expedition forthcoming to Greenland. Will, will you take it to there? Gladly. Tell us about the about the green about the Greenland trip. Okay, uh, the the Greenland the Greenland project was I'm I'm the founder of that of that project and I came up with the idea about ten years ago and I've always had a vision of crossing the ice cap for what some for a great project of which I wasn't sure of at the time but now I've, I'm. I came up with the idea of doing doing a publicity uh, campaign to raise awareness about about autism and also to showcase the abilities of people on the spectrum. And so I came up with the idea of leading an expedition team across the ice cap of Greenland, which that expedition would take about one month, and it would be 400 miles. Pulling, pulling sleds on skis in freezing cold weather, essentially living in the freezer for, for a month. And so that is, that is the scope of the project, and right now preparations are under, underway. And as, as you know, I'm, I have been diagnosed on the spectrum and have gone through my life challenges, but I just continue to keep moving, moving forward one step at a time, <laughs> which is what is required for expeditions also. Tell us about your preparation. My, my preparation for this expedition, uh, oh, there's a lot of preparation. It's not something that's going to, to be very easy to do, but again, this takes step-by-step -step planning and preparation and perseverance. Part of that is disciplining myself and developing my organizational skills to, to as much as I can. It's sort of a weak area of mine, but I'm just continuing to persevere and work on it. And I've been able to make vast improvements on, on this area. There's, I was also worked as a summer camp counselor at an organization called the Syndico, which does extreme sports, reaches, reaches people on the spectrum through youth and young yes, adults. Sponsoring us. And on, on the on on the spectrum, and they they are they are going to be sponsoring this expedition. And, so, and th through working at that working at that camp, I was able to gain skills in organization, improve my organization skills, and I just continue to work on that, as well as being able to do I mean, as well as all the intense physical training and just being able to uh, uh, mind, body, and spirit as well. Those are, the main, those are the main preparations in a nutshell without going into all the details. I imagine those would be incredibly complex details. Oh, they are, yep. yes, yeah, mm, they are. And th again, this is where my organization skills come in is to, is to put all these things in place, which I'm gonna ha have to do working with working with the teammates and, and interacting with the teammates and also for my, my own self hmm, in keeping things together. Hmm. Really good. Forward. Now, Christian, uh, why are you dressed like that? It, <laughs> it's I not am. that cold outside, <laughs> and it sure isn't that cold here. I know, and I'm going to have to take some of this stuff off. This is for, for our um, trip. 
um, we have to wear um, only synthetic, and um, this it, and fur is okay, but cotton is not. And of course, these things come along with me everywhere. I wear them all the time. They're my skimmy toys, and I'm going to have to work around whether or not they're going to freeze mm -hmm. um, there. Um, yeah, and so the fur is allowed, thank God, because I have to touch things. And there's going to be a challenge with my sensory. I have sensory issues um, that I won't be able to be doing this all the time because I'm going to have my hands full of skis and poles. And that's actually a good thing. That's the one time, one of the times when I'm only still is when, when I have my hands filled with um, skinny toys or doing um, sports. And so people say, Rady, how can I go on this thing because I'm so weird? But um, the fact is, is when I'm engaged in sports, I'm not weird and I feel free and strong. And you can't even tell I'm autistic because these things will be hidden under clothes. Um, Stealthy Skim, we call it at the mm -hmm. program I go to. It's called Autistry Studios for Adult Autistics. And um, we, we work on projects, um, pre-vocational. And even though I'm old, um, I'm feeling like with this project, when he mentioned it, it was so exciting. Um, I said, what? Freezing cold? And out in the, out in the cold, um, heavy exercise? That's perfect. Um, and he didn't believe me, but then uh, we, 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 we kept talking. We met at meditation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anlor, Anlor Gavin. She wrote a book, too, that being seen. She's a good, good woman. She introduced us at, a, at an autism sit. It was called Aut Sit. And, um, and we met there. Remember? I do, That's yes. Right. So tell us about all these things that you do uh, right now. A very interesting background. So what is this uh, program that you're involved in now? The, the, the Greenland? No, the uh, Aut. Oh, it's called Autistry Studio, yes. and it's in San Rafael, and it's for autistic adults. Um, Pre-vocational, we make things like robots, or there's something called Raspberry Pi. It's a little computer device that I'm really, I really like that. And um, I'm actually sewing a sensory-friendly beanie to wear on my head for this trip because I can't wear. They want us to wear a wool hat, and that's not going to work for me. Mm -hmm. I'm too sensitive. So. Um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a project-based therapy for older autistics, and it's the only one of its kind around here. Um, it's a very unique program. Um, I even made a website called Autistry and Me mm -hmm. um, well, of that and tied it to Twitter and Facebook. And hopefully we can tie this to Twitter and Facebook too. People, you can scan that with your phone and go to the website to see our project. Um, yeah. We're going to make our own food, too, in baby wipes. We have to keep it next to our skin because it freezes there. And every, so, yep. every, That's correct. Mm -hmm. Everything, anything you don't want to freeze, you have to keep on your person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I made baby wipes. I learned this on a survivalist website. Um, the troops in Iraq, it, this is the most requested, or any war, this is the most requested item is baby wipes. So I individually dip them in alcohol because I want to get it really. We can't wear deodorant on this trip. Mm -hmm. No, mm. and and that's going to be a bit of a problem. So um, I, I I devised this. I looked on a survivalist website, and you make a baby wipe, and you put it in here. This is a firefighting dozer pack, but so it's my sensory control bag, um, but it looks like it's utilitarian. Yep. So you can't even tell it's because of autism. Tell us about the about your Colorado about your Colorado preparations. Well, uh, there's. Quite a quite a bit to do on the on the Colorado trip. A big a big part of that is physical training, very very intense physical training. Like to give you an example, I mean I should be working up to about four hours a day of working out, three to four hours a day of intense exercise. For me, I have a well, I have a pile of rocks in the backyard that I fill up with a wheelbarrow and push up the hills. That's just to give you an example. And also, I have a 50-pound pack that I do uh, 25 push-ups with mm. that I put on my back and do push-ups with. And I do this on a regular basis. Not to mention my leg workouts, which, again, I have a pack and weights that I work out with. And I have a whole set of exercises. 
typically these can take about two hours the going through the battery of exercises to uh, stretch for strength building not to mention the stretching the stretching comes first mm -hmm. so then I don't end up my muscles don't cramp up and I end up injuring myself that part is that part is really important especially in cold cold weather so that said then there's the endurance which is for me running up running up a hill running up hills up the Berkeley Hills mm -hmm. and that provides all those steep hills provide a lot of uh, good conditioning for the legs and not to mention the endurance part of the workout as well so I've been doing all of those on a regular basis for the last five months so this is something you don't do overnight you have to train over a period of mm -hmm. time over months over typically it's best to start like a year in advance to start the physical training and to build up mm -hmm. not only that then there's the part of getting then then there's then there's the part of get, getting your equipment together too organizing your equipment the very one of the biggest things is the boots making sure that making sure that you get the right ski boots and as i found out on the wrong, on the last expedition uh, I didn't have the right, and my the boots were too small, and uh. I had a big problem. I had to suffer through with them for eight days in Yellowstone, so that's really critical. The the training, as as I was mentioning, involves a lot of physical, a lot of physical fitness, and and working out with those, working out with those weights. I would do I do that for about two hours two hours a day. I'll take maybe one rest day during the week to rest my body. Also, another thing that's really important is making sure to build up muscle and to put on weight because a person will burn up the calories and five lose weight. 5,000 a day. Calories. Five thousand, you're supposed to eat 5,000 calories a day on a winter expedition uh, to keep to maintain your body weight and to maintain your energy level. And I, and I need to, and I'm eating about 3,000, two to 3,000 closer to 3,000 to build up and working out. And so that's, that's, what I, that's what I need. So diet is very, very important. Also, in terms of the diet, making sure that I eat the right foods. I don't eat any junk food. Right. Eating just, just good, clean water. Uh, I eat more organic uh, meats and whole grains fresh vegetables and fruits all those are really important that's nat and also I take supplements too and I have a green powder that I take too with along with a protein with a protein powder typically I do that in the morning and put it on my whole grain cereal and I find that balances me out pretty much very good Christian what have you done or what are you doing for your training um I do the the core is very important for cross country skiing, the um, lats and the triceps for the pulling motion and the glutes. Those are the three main important areas for cross country skiing. I thought I was going to have to bulk up as well, but looking at the body types of female cross country skiers, they like them lean but not as lean as a cross country runner, which I used to be cross country running, but. Um, I thought I was going to have to really bulk up for this because all the calories were going to burn, but it looks like not. That The cardiovascular is really important, and we're going to be at altitude, too, in which I've never really been at. We're going to do a trial run. That's part of what this Colorado is about. It's a trial run for the Greenland Project to see how we cope and how we get along. Paul and I, the only autistic people on the trip, but all the other people working on it, they're... Um, they're with the Syndigo. They already work with autistic youth in extreme sports, and we're not youth, but um, right. you know we're <laughs> young at heart, or whatever you want to say. Um, yeah, I'm working mainly on my cardiovascular first because that's what they recommended to Paul last year: um, cardiovascular first, and then do the um, bulking up, especially with the triceps, the lats, and the core. Yeah, those are very important. And as far as the food there, a lot of autistics have food sensitivities, and so do I. And so I made my own um, uh, kind of power bar thing out of um, 
tahini and some seeds like chia seeds, hemp seeds, um, uh, coconut, and mix it all together. And then you keep it close to your body with this. Um, I'll keep mine with my dozer tack thing here, you know. Um, then I can have soothing for my autism <laughs> with my lucky foot and everything. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, kill two birds with one stone, keep the stuff warm. Tell us about the timing of Greenland. Well, the timing of Greenland, it's supposed to, t it's going to take place either this spring, April, April, May of 2017. If we have all the funding in place, if the funding isn't in place, then it will be postponed to the following year, uh, spring or April, April, May of 2018. And before, before that trip takes place, we're going to be doing a practice run the end of this coming January to Colorado, uh, for, which is preparation for the Greenland expedition. And the Colorado trip is a 100-mile, 8-day trek pulling, ski, pulling sleds on skis, skiing from Aspen, Aspen to Vail, which is half trekking halfway across the Rockies. I was excited when I found out about this project, um, and I, I was confused, too. I, I, I thought, I knew Paul was on the spectrum, and I just assumed everyone else was, too. Uh, it turns out they're not. Most of them work for Ascend, or I think Autism Speaks is involved, are they? Okay. Um, and Ascendigo, Ascendigo, the Ascendigo, yes. the group out of Carbondale, Colorado, which does, what does their camp have a name? It's just called Camp Ascendigo, it's right? Ascend called it's called just Ascendigo. Ascend Ascendigo. Yeah. Ascendigo. Um, they they they're the main sponsors of and, it. And what they do, they they work with uh, autism, autistic teens. people on teens and young adults yeah. on the sp on the spectrum all year round. Year year round, they have summer programs and they have winter programs. And what they what they do is they they work with them. They they they. Extreme the, sports, extreme various extreme sports activities, which has been found to calm people like me. Um, I like this pressure on my body, it, heavy pressure. And OT groups, um, they do these OT exercises called sensory sensory diet. And I just found out about it, and since I've been doing that, it's really good. But I've been doing it through sports and stuff like firefighting all my life, just not realizing it didn't have a name before of sensory diet. Now it has a name, but yeah. um, whatever. <laughs> really, really good. I think you mentioned this a little before, but I'd like to explore it uh, additionally. Why are you doing this? Why, why, am I, why am I doing this? Well, we. We. <laughs> yes. We are doing why this. Why are you? Yes. <laughs> you in the plural. Okay. Well, I, we are. We are. We are doing this to to raise awareness for for people on the for the general public mm -hmm. about the issues of autism, and also to showcase the abilities of people on the on the spectrum and what they can do. And this project is an example. I mean, heck, even normal people couldn't do this. Uh, the the ones I tell about this are going, oh my God, you're crazy! <laughs> and they say they say who's who's running this thing anyway? Do they know what they're doing? I've had people very concerned, like my counselor, my um, therapist, you know, my support people. They're like, oh, huh? <laughs> this is a far fetched thing, but no, nope, we're doing it. It was a far fetched thing, and people thought I was crazy, <laughs> but you know, I just persevered and got the project to this point. The funny thing is, is that when I was doing the, when I first introduced the Trans Sierra mm -hmm. project two years before it actually took place, people thought it was crazy then. And I remember bringing the report in for the first, the, the first Ascend board meeting, and people were skeptical. <laughs> but I, I persevered, and it came to pass. The community that I've, I've sensed, um, said it to, has been really, um, supportive like that sports basement that outfitted me the other day um i'm so poor i'm on disability i don't work but um i thought okay well i'll just try to get maybe a sporting goods store to sponsor me and my dentist told me about this sports basement and we went there and they were so nice and so so cool and so we got our I skis and boots um i was amazed 
Yeah, I was too. That was just the other day. So now it's starting to sink in that we have to get that to work out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've been working out consistently. I know, but, but now still. It's, we have now to it's step it up <laughs> a little more and really get into the zone. Well, we're really good. Last thing for me will be, you know, we know where people can contact you through the expeditionautism.com uh, and the shirt. Uh, quick response code and website. Question I have though is, how can people support the expedition? How can our viewers help you out? Well, uh, the answer to that question, we have we have a um, we have a website or not a website, but we're, we're going to have a donation site mm -hmm. that's going to be coming up uh, very very shortly. Mm -hmm. That's off of this. Off, off of, of that. that. Expeditionautism.com. Tell us about the distances of the Colorado of the Colorado trip and the Greenland trip. Okay, the co the Colorado trip is going to be a distance of a hundred miles uh, from from Aspen Aspen to Vale, eight days, and the Greenland trip is going to be four hundred miles, taking a taking approximately a month. <laughs> this has been incredibly inspiring, uh, not just for our viewers, but for myself. And so I want to find out if there are any last minute comments or thoughts that you folks have. Well, I just, I just want to say that I'm, I'm glad for all the support that we already have, have um, garnered and I'm, I'm, I'm happy it's gone this far. And um, I'm looking forward to working with Paul and You'll hear from us again. <laughs> Excellent. And along those lines, I understand that uh, the expeditions will be filmed and that over the next year or so that you'll be uh, back in touch with us and keeping uh, us and our viewers uh, informed about how the progress of the expeditions are, correct? Certainly will. We, we will, definitely. <laughs> we won't and be able to get rid of this. <laughs> yeah. We'll be here. And likewise, I'm looking forward to working with Kristen. And Let's see where we are. Uh, great things <laughs> we're going to accomplish. <laughs> and, and, and again, a donation a place to donate is going to be up shortly, up soon. Well, thank you. Uh, we wish you the very, very best and stay warm. And now for our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. Thank you, Keith. Hello, everybody. First off, I wanted to say, hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Today, I would like to. Um, share the first thing I'd like to share is um, for our cultural report is um, Saturday December 10th at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. will be a job club meeting at the Ark of San Francisco which is on Howard Howard and 11th Street uh, the speaker's name is David Platzer from Department of Anthropology John Hopkins University he will be uh, talking about the autism employment puzzle an ethnographic approach to employment on the autism spectrum, connecting academic research with his experience as a technique employee. So that's what he'll be talking about. And adults on the spectrum, families and mentors and professionals are all welcomed. And for more information, you can, you can contact um, info at ascend.org. You can go to their website too. On the same day, at starting at 2 p.m. will be the annual Ascend Holiday Potluck Party at the Ark. And um, it will be our, you can join us because uh, we'll be, it'll be full of food, conversation, music, and good cheer. We will have a Santa DJ and games and low sensory space available. And um, so, yeah, pretty much that's the entertainment we will be having and some people singing too. And um, it's a potluck, so bring food if you can, but if you can't, just show up anyways. We would love to see you. And one last thing I would like to share is um, Tuesday, December 13th, um, a you can go to amctheater.com and f find this out too, but pretty much at any AMC theater, they're showing a sensory-friendly film, which is The Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them. It starts at 7 p.m. and to find out locations again, a www.amctheater.com. 
um, because the locations vary. So that is one thing happening on December 13th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Well, for this week, I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Paul Nussbaum. Christine Nussishas. I'm Stacy Kennedy. Mm -hmm. This is Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. And until next time, we wish you and yours a very happy holiday season. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.